Hello, friends. The dean told me to try these modern technologies. So I dug through my old files and found this tape, labeled 1901, one of my early adventures. Quite a time, I must say. Before I press play, there's a short overview at the end. All right then. Where's that play button? November 11th, 1901. Departed Port Stanley yesterday. Six hours south along the Drake Passage. No land in sight. If there's nothing, I'll have to turn back.
curious how it was made. Was it one of my future lectures? My assistant Archer would explain once he's back from the field. He left me with this summer here. I've no idea what it means, but I'm sure you will. All right. How do I stop this thing? Is there an off switch? Modern machines? Ah. Ha, ah, Archer. There you are. This whole modern contraption business completely beyond me. Well, this was another example of what's possible when you bring together Midjourney, Nano Banana, Cedence Pro, Suno, and Eleven Labs. The result? Surprisingly coherent. Again. And I want to make one thing very clear. Once you understand how Nano Banana thinks, and by that I mean how it responds to prompts, it becomes incredibly powerful. In many cases, a single image is enough. Gemini 2.5 flash image can take that one frame and spin it into a full-blown story. And honestly, I find that kind of remarkable. So just a quick look behind the scenes of this project. The main focus of the video was the animation itself, more like a reference example. Still, I want to take a moment to share 12 things I learned along the way. Not big theories, just things that became clear while building the whole sequence. Let's start with the most basic part, the prompt. For me, there are three different types. First, the prompt used to create the original image, for example, with Midjourney. Second, the prompt used to edit an existing image, like in Nano Banana. And third, the prompt that drives the video generation process. Each one behaves differently, and even a small change, an extra word or a missing one, can have a huge impact. Sometimes it completely ruins the flow of an edit or breaks the logic of an animation. For this project alone, I created close to 1,000 images, around 150 video clips, and 30 different music tracks. If you want quality results, the whole click once and it's done idea just doesn't work. Everything starts with the right prompt. I usually write mine from scratch or use ChatGPT to shape them, but I have to admit, I have run into its limits more than once. When that happens, it forgets details, mixes things up, interprets too loosely, or simply refuses to follow the instructions. And yes, that can even happen after starting a brand new chat, which is supposed to reset its memory. For this project, I also brought Claude into the mix. The key is to stick to a consistent structure and avoid rewriting everything from scratch each time. If you do that, both platforms deliver strong results, especially for Nano Banana and the video models. When it comes to consistency, that is exactly what master prompts are for. They help enormously, both for image editing and for video generation. I have covered this in earlier tutorials, but here is the short version of the structure I use. Subject, followed by action, then scene or setting, then style or lighting, and finally the camera. The camera part is the wild card. It can come at the beginning or the end, depending on what matters most in the scene. One thing to watch out for is negative phrasing in prompts. If you write something like, there is no animal in the cockpit, the AI might latch onto the word animal and decide to add one just for fun. A much safer way to say it would be, there are only humans in the cockpit. Same goes for snow scenes. If you want visible footprints, you have to say so directly. For example, a man walks through the snow, leaving footprints. Never assume the AI will just figure it out, even if the context seems obvious to you. Try not to describe things that are already in the image, especially if the AI might misread your intent. Let's say there is already a person in the scene, and you write a video prompt like, the person in the leather jacket does this or that. Now, if the AI does not clearly recognise the leather jacket, it might assume you are referring to someone new, and simply add a second person into the scene. That can happen more often than you think. So always make sure your prompts refer clearly to what is already visible. Otherwise, the AI might start inventing things that were never meant to be there. For this project, I tested four different video platforms. Kling 2.1, Midjourney Video, One 2.2, and Seedance Pro. Only the strongest clips made it into the final version. 
and yes, getting there took a lot of time, and a good chunk of credits. The results were all over the place. Sometimes the plane spun in strange directions. Sometimes I got plastic whales instead of ocean footage, and sometimes objects collided in ways that made no sense at all. Collision detection still seems to be a major weak point. In the end, every single shot you see in this animation was created with Sea Dance Pro. It gave me the most consistent and stable output. That said, the other platforms absolutely have their strengths as well. It just depends on how and where you use them. With Sea Dance Pro, you can extend the video length up to 12 seconds, though it does come at a higher cost. But here is what I learned along the way. If you do not set a proper start and end frame, things tend to get messy once you go beyond five seconds. The AI starts making its own decisions, sometimes turning a remote alien outpost into a hotel, swapping skis for wheels, or randomly changing the surface details of the plane. One version had strange symbols, another showed numbers, and sometimes I ended up with full text across the fuselage. It all starts drifting the moment the AI is left to guess. If an object in your reference image is too small, the AI starts to guess, and that rarely ends well. You have seen the researcher character in this animation. He has a very specific look and feel, with clearly defined features. And yet, the AI struggled. Sometimes he turned into a realistic human, other times into a strange mix of bear and dog. What happens is this, the model falls back on its training data and starts interpreting, often in the wrong direction which, in my case, cost a lot of extra credits. But if we flip it around, the rule becomes simple. The larger the visual presence of a subject, the better the result, especially when it comes to close-ups. Have you ever asked yourself, right or left, from whose point of view? The real question is how to tell the AI which hand the character is supposed to move. Is it the hand on your right, as the viewer, or the character's own right hand? The two are completely opposite, and that causes confusion. What has worked best for me is this. Just say, the character's right hand. In most cases, the AI will then follow the figure's own perspective. Does it always work? No. But if it doesn't, just regenerate, or switch to left and try again. One thing I've really come to appreciate is the start and end frame function. It gives you the confidence that the AI will stay relatively close to the aesthetic you intended. Without that feature, there is always the risk that the AI starts interpreting freely, adding unexpected objects, changing colours, or inventing its own movement logic. At that point, it becomes a bit of a roulette wheel. This time I used Runway Act 2 again, and once again, it turned out to be a real challenge. But here is something I noticed. When you create your character reference, make sure the figure is shown with open arms and remove any objects that are directly in front of them. If you do not, and the hands come into contact with those objects during the video, things can fall apart quickly. The result is often complete chaos, and the clip goes straight into the trash. And finally, if you want to create a film project like this, you need three things in generous supply. Time, credits, and patience. Time for concept work, for images, video clips, music, sounds, voice recordings, sound design, and editing. Credits because some platforms burn through your monthly quota faster than snow under the sun, and of course, plenty of patience. Most of the time, you get usable results, but there are also moments of complete failure. Then it is all about adjusting the prompt and trying again, and again. For two of the scenes in this film, I spent, no exaggeration, two to three hours on a single five-second clip. Nothing worked. That gets frustrating fast. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.